Okay, I have uh, called my speech uh, functional traits and main or most what are the most important physiological processes determining the seedling establishment in Mediterranean climates. No? Well, one of the first questions that we can ask is what really determines what drives the success in forest restoration uh, plantations in, in Mediterranean forest restoration projects. No? Okay, so if we have chosen correctly the species and the provenance of each species, the main factor that drives uh, success is the soil preparation method. Okay, it's important for helping water to get inside deep in the soil to promote uh, fast growth of and easy growth of the roots in, in the soil. It's very important the, the date where you plant or you seed, very important. You can't plant or seed uh, in the dry season, you have to do it in the wet season. It's important all the post-planting cares that you can do. When, this morning we talked about irrigation, but it's also important with competition. If wheat is a problem, wheat are a problem. If we have grazing uh, grazers, we have to protect the plants against those grazers. No? And the fourth factor that uh, controls or determines success is the kind of plant that we are using. No? The how the kind of attributes that have our plants. And the plant attributes can be strongly determined by how we grow the plants in the nursery. Okay, so my objective is try to discuss with you the main physiological processes and main functional attributes that determine uh, the survival in our Mediterranean systems. Well, if we focus on functional attributes, the question is, what is a functional attribute? I think that all of you know what is it, okay? But a functional attribute is any morphological or physiological trait that drives or determines the water, the carbon, the nutrient economy of the plant, its capacity to tolerate any stress factor, and the capacity of the plant to recover from those stress factors, okay? What I am talking about is, for example, the morphology of the plants. Within a species, you can find very difficult, different sizes of the plants. This is a large plant with a lot of leaves uh, that has been produced under specific conditions that have made the seedling to be large. These plants are of a similar size. Uh, for example, uh, the degree of hardening of the, of the seedlings. This kind of, these two pines have different hardening levels. This one is very low hardening because it's growing. You can see that the stem is not uh, brown, it's not lignified. This is lignified, this is a more hardening seedling, so it's more resistant to cold and drought conditions. Okay, just like this one, this is more cold tolerant than this one that has suffered from photolinization. More morphology, the, the root system, some plants have more roots than others. The, the morphology of the root systems, this is a deformed root system, this is a more natural root system, etc. So, functional attributes are morphological and physiological uh, traits. Okay? We can strongly determine these attributes. So, what, what are the main factors that control the functional attributes of our seedings? Very important, the first factor is the or genetic origin of the seeds, okay, not within a species. Uh, depending on where you obtain the seeds, you can have very difficult, different functional attributes. For example, if you obtain seeds from inside inland provinces, probably these plants have more or more resistant to cold conditions because they are adapted to cold conditions than if you obtain seeds from populations close or in uh, very uh, mild temperature, uh, wind temperature conditions. Nursery cultivation practices strongly influence how the plants are going to behave in the field. They strongly control the, the functional attributes of, of, the, of the plants, especially nutrition, fertilization, the container characteristics, mainly the size, the volume, okay, the growing medium, and watering. What? strongly influence uh, the attributes of seedlings. A third factor that controls 
the ceiling attributes is where the nursery is. It's not this, we will not have the same results if we grow, if, for example, if, if we want to make a plantation in a cold place, it was not the same to produce the plant in a nursery where the plants remain under cold conditions because the winters are very cold, than in a, wind, uh, a nursery that is, for example, close to the sea where the winters are very mild. If you use the same provenance and you grow the plants in the same conditions, the plants will not have the same hardiness, cold hardiness, because the fact that the seedling is living under cold conditions will make it more cold uh, resistant. Okay, so nursery location has a very, very strong uh, effect on uh, seedling attributes. And finally, seedling age, okay, the age of our plants. Uh, usually, within a species, all the plants, if they are not grown in larger containers, would have uh, a lower quality, their attributes will be more poor, and will have lower performance than if the seedlings are young. Okay, there are, for example, one-year-old seedlings usually uh, perform better in the field than three-year-old seedlings within a species, okay? Okay, what I'm going to show you here are results of our studies. And this was one of the first, or one of the first questions that we asked when we started to work here. What are the... <coughs> What are the most important attributes that control uh, the establishment of our seedlings in Mediterranean conditions? Okay, when I started to work, when I came to the center, uh, our research line started working with, for example, irrigation. And the idea that <coughs> our, initial, our initial hypothesis was that the seedlings should be small, that irrigation would be low in order to uh, acclimate the plants to drought conditions, okay? What we call uh, water stress conditioning. And uh, we started to work in that area. But, but soon we realized that that kind of cultivation practices do not really improve or strongly improve uh, the performance of the seedlings in the field. No? <coughs> the common current uh, among foresters when I started to work was that seedlings should be small, with poor nutrition, and uh, with a huge root system uh, in relation to the, the shoot system, and the shoots and the plants should be cultivated with very low uh, irrigation. Okay, that was the common hypothesis. No? Okay, it's true that the seedlings must be uh, stress tolerant. That's true, and uh, in many cases, um, the most important issue at least if we plant inside in the Iberian Peninsula, in this part of Spain. The main limiting factor during the wet season is uh, cold. Okay, we have heavy frosts. So one of the important issues is, is that the seedlings must be cold tolerant. Okay? And uh, um, usually seedlings that are cold tolerant are also drought tolerant. Okay, there are, there are two traits that go together. If you uh, are able to produce cold tolerant seedlings, those seedlings will also be very drought tolerant. Okay? Uh, this is an example uh, of uh, the importance of being cold tolerant in, in Mediterranean plantations inside the Iberian Peninsula. This is a uh, whole oak, what we silex, and what we did here in this experiment was to cultivate this. Uh, the oaks in two nurseries. This is a coastal nursery near to the Mediterranean Sea where the winters are very mild. And the inland nursery is this one. We have uh, quite cold uh, winters. No? So we tested the effect of uh, frost uh, of minus 12 Celsius degree on uh, the mortality of the plants. And we uh, analyzed the evolution of the, this cold tolerance. And as you can see, in summer, there are no difference in cold tolerance, but uh, you can see that the plants that remained in the coastal nursery under very mild winter conditions, the plants uh, were less uh, cold tolerant relative to the inland uh, tolerant during the early fall. The 
the plants from the coastal areas uh, started to acclimate to cold conditions but with a strong delay relative to the inland coast and what's very interesting is that in, in the late winter the plants that were growing in the coastal nursery uh, started to do harden before the plants that were growing in the inland, uh, in the inland nursery. So in the, at the end of the winter and in the middle of the fall there was strong difference between these two uh, types of, of plants that were the, of the same provenance, grown under the same conditions. When we took them to the field, I want you to look here, we planted them in, in two moments, in December and the early December and mid-February and when we analyzed their growth after one year, we realized that the plants that came from the coastal nursery uh, did not grow, they even decreased their growth. We had 21% of shoot die back in that plantation of these kind of plants, while the growth in the inland of, of the plants from the inland nursery was quite high, and only 4% of the plants showed some kind of dieback. The reason of this dieback here is because uh, one week after our plantation in the field, the plants experienced uh, minus 10 Celsius degree, and of course the plants that came from the coastal nursery were not acclimated yet to cold conditions, so they experienced a lot of dieback that explained a decrease in their uh, shoot growth. So this is, this is important result because what is telling us that is if you want to plant under winter uh, on sites that winter is very harsh, the plants must be cold tolerant. Okay, and the location of the nursery plays in this sense an important role. An important attribute for achieving high survival and growth in Mediterranean uh, conditions is root growth. Okay, so the plants must grow fast, uh, the roots must grow fast after planting, and the, the size of the root system must be quite large just before this prior the onset of the summer drought. Okay, this is a, a study that has been published in relation to the importance of rooting depth and survival in five uh, Mediterranean species. This is a very nice experiment carried out in southeastern Spain, uh, which is the driest part of Europe. Okay, This part in the experiment was done in a place that uh, precipitation is around 250 millimeters per year. Okay, And what the authors saw is that some survival Help you? No, I can read the, the author of the... Padilla and Ugnaire, okay? Thank you. I, I will give you the presentation, okay? So you can read all these names. And the survival in this area was directly related to the rooting depth. So those species that showed uh, deep root systems had higher survival in these systems. So one of, an important message of this result is that our plants, if they want to survive under Mediterranean conditions, the best or one of the key attributes is the growth of the, of the root system, the growth of new roots. Okay, you remember the plug this morning? The, when you produce the plug in the field, the plant must produce new roots that colonize all the surrounding soil. The amount of new roots there and the depth they achieve is a critical uh, trait for uh, survival in Mediterranean environments. Our experience is that it's less important to be drought tolerant, less, I don't say not important, it's less important because when you plant, you plant in the wet season. And during the wet season, usually, usually, and maybe you can have very dry year, you can be a very dry winter, something like that, but usually, at least in this part of the Iberian Peninsula, uh, the soil remains wet, so it's not necessary to be very, very drought tolerant. What you have to do is to grow fast, to produce a, a large and deep root system, okay? Yeah, uh, what species are you just doing? Well, uh, it's not my study, okay? It's, uh, this is Pinus alepensis, Ephedra fragilis, Olea europea, Retama sferocarpa, and uh, Salsola, I don't remember that. Opposite 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 thank you. Somebody raised a hand? Uh, what about soil moisture for the 
It changed through the year. If you look, if you look at this study, the soil was drying through the summer downwards, and those species that reached the deepest horizons in the soil reached the wettest and the humid horizons. So they survived because they were able to reach the wettest parts of the soil. So the species that only produce very uh, uh, roots on the surface could not reach those wet horizons, and that's why they show a high mortality rate. Okay. And which one is more In this case, it was Salsola and Retamas ferrocarpa. These are two shrubs. This is the Aleppo pine. This is a gymnosper. Um, I don't know the English name, sorry. It's a shrub, a, fe a federa. Okay. And this is the olive tree, or the wild variety of the olive tree. Ah, oh, sorry. These are the new roots that colonize the soil. Okay. Well, this is a. Uh, Another result, this is from one of our studies, and this is uh, the species we, uh, I'm showing the results are from the oak, Quercusidex, and what we saw here is that, uh, this is similar as, as the previous one, the survival of Quercusidex after the first summer was directly related to the mass of new roots colonizing the soil. So uh, those plants that produce high amounts of new roots uh, had higher survival, and these plants that produce high amount of roots uh, survive because they were able to maintain a high uh, water potential during the summer. So if you produce a large and deep root system, you can absorb water in the middle of the summer and your water status is high. You will have a high water potential and that is critical to, in a, to maintain your photosynthesis during the summer. Okay? What you cannot do is close your stomata for one month in order to uh, store water that is dangerous for the plant because at the end, if you don't make photosynthesis, you will die of hungry. Do you understand? Okay, you, don't, you do not have carbon right? So the plants cannot do that for a long time, especially they are small ones like these one-year-old seedlings. So our initial hypothesis when I started to work was that uh, if we compare uh, the morphology, uh, of, we compared two sorts of morphologies, large seedlings with a lot of leaves against small seedlings with less leaves, but this plant seems to be more balanced with respect to the root system because it has a small transpiring surface relative to the root, to the absorb water absorbing surface, and this plant seems to be more unbalanced because it has a large transpiring surface relative to the root system. So our initial hypothesis is that probably if we had to plant the seedlings, this kind, these two kinds of seedlings that we have called, this is the pheno, seromorphic phenotype, sorry it's in Spanish, and this is the productive uh, phenotype, okay? And so what we asked, or what we, what we have hypothesized is that what happens if we plant in an increasing gradient of water stress? Our initial hypothesis was that uh, in the paradise, when there is no water stress, both kinds of plants would have similar survival rates, but as uh, the drought stress increases, probably the, um, the, the sorry, the, this is a strong, this is wrong. Okay, it's, 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 it's strong. Probably the, the, the advantage would be uh, uh, for the seromorphic uh, phenotype would be increased in, in the severe conditions, while the productive phenotype would be would perform worse in the most severe conditions. Okay. This was our initial hypothesis, but this hypothesis is not, it's not true, it's not correct. Okay? I will show you some results that support uh, that this hypothesis is not correct. Okay, this is a very interesting result. Uh, this, this study is very interesting because it shows very uh, interesting results that, that that hypothesis is not correct. Uh, I like this study because I participated in this debate. The, this study was carried out in the Canary Islands and the government of the Canary Islands called me uh, because they wanted to, to be in the middle of uh, a nursery man and uh, the biologist that they had different point of views how to uh, cultivate Purpus Pinus canariensis. In, Ca in the Canary Islands, the traditional way to growing the plants is using as growing media 
the volcanic soil and introduced no fertilization. Okay? They grew the plants in containers as I showed you here. And the seedlings are very small. And even they have symptoms of um, chlorosis, nutrient deficiency, but the nurseries think that is the best plant because it's very hardening. And they grow it at, at full sun under windy condition and they say this, this is the best seedling. And okay, the, but the, the Canary governments knew that their success in plantation was very low, extremely low. And they said, okay, it's low because, yes, the, the dry part of the Canary Islands is uh, very bad condition, so we can't expect high levels of success there. Okay, so what we propose them is to try to change their uh, cultivation system. So uh, these are the results. This is the, what we call the alternative method that basically consisted in changing the volcanic soil and introducing peat and, and introduce fertilization. Okay? It was a moderate fertilization. And they planted in a place that where rainfall is less than 300 millimeters. So it's a very harsh place. Okay? And these are the results of survival and high growth after around two years. And as you can see, the, in this very harsh place, the alternative method, the method that we were proposing, uh, provided uh, seedlings with higher survival. The seedlings are much more, uh, are, are bigger than the seedlings produced in the traditional system. As you can see, the height of the seedlings of Pine Canaries is in our alternative method is 20 centimeters. So the traditional cultivation system reduced significantly the survival, and the difference was especially important in growth. As you can see, that the our method increased a lot the, the growth uh, of the plants. So, one of the important, uh, important take-home messages of this study is that, okay, small seedlings, poor nutrient seedlings, usually do not have a very good performance under dry conditions. Okay? This is another example. This is a study carried out here in, in the Serranillo. And this is a study that uh, we compare the performance of Pinus alapensis seedlings. We produce large and nutrient nitrogen rich uh, seedlings versus small seedlings. Within the small seedlings, we differentiated two groups the nitrogen poor and nitrogen rich uh, seedlings. Okay? And we plant them under two conditions under a high competitive uh, environment. Uh, caused by the weeds and in a, an environment with no, uh, with no competition. Okay? And uh, what we saw is that when you transplant the seedlings to an environment with no weed competition, where stress is, is quite low to moderate, uh, there were no significant statistical significant difference in mortality. Mortality was low, but with no significant difference among the three types of plants. Okay? This is large plants, like this one small plants like this one, but we had high nutrient-rich and nutrient-poor seedlings. The difference arose when we transplanted the seedlings to a very harsh environment, very harsh environment. Weeds create a very stressful conditions, uh, create very stressful conditions because they compete for water and nutrients, okay? So when the weeds die, because basically uh, the weeds in the environment, in Mediterranean environments are annuals, so when they die at the end of May, the soil is very, very dry. So the seedlings of woody plants that remain hay experience a very, very strong uh, dry conditions. And in these conditions, in these very dry, stressful conditions created by weeds, the mortality of the large seedlings was significantly lower than the both kinds of small seedlings. So this is more competitive under weed planting conditions than this kind of seedlings. Okay, so this is another example against our initial hypothesis that small seeding would have more advantages under harsh Mediterranean conditions. Do you want more examples? This is another example with Quercusilex. This is an experiment where we wanted to test the effect of a 
a shrub on the survival of Homo seedlings. And what we did here is to test if the survival of Homo, of, of homo seedlings that differ significantly in size would differ under uh, the shrub or in the gaps. So we wanted to test if there was interaction between the microsite and the characteristic of the, of the plants we introduced. Okay? So this represents the large seedlings and this represents the small seedlings. Okay, uh, I want to focus on the results of the seedling size, but what we observe is that uh, we, we represent the mortality in this experiment. Okay, we can see that the mortality under the shrub, under the shrub, the microclimatic conditions are better than in the gaps because there's a shade, the temperature is lower, radiation is low, it's lower. So the stress conditions under a shrub in, in midsummer is lower than in the gaps. While when you plant the seedlings, which range in different sizes under the retama, there was no difference. So under moderate stressful conditions created by the shrub, the seed size did not affect the mortality outcome. Okay, of the experiment. But very interesting, the difference arises in the gaps, in the most stressful conditions. In the gaps, the small seedlings had higher mortality rate, uh, higher mortality rate than the large seedlings. And that is very interesting because they demonstrate that again the large seedlings had lower mortality than the small seedlings under very stressful conditions. Okay, so under low to moderate stress conditions, probably there are no difference, but under very stressful conditions is where the difference between um, functional attributes arise. So specifically under stressful, very high stressful conditions, large seedlings, high fertilized seedlings usually perform better than small seedlings with a very poor fertilization. The, the size, the difference in size of the seedlings was achieved in the nursery by using different fertilization treatments. They were high fertilized plants against low fertilized plants. Another example. This is with a shrub. This shrub is called Cuscofifera. This is another fertilization experiment. And what we tested is the effect of an increasing uh, nitrogen fertilization, fertilization rate on the output planting performance. So we had seedlings that received no fertilization. The oaks grow quite well without fertilization because the acorn is, the seed, the acorn is so large that the reserves that the plants have is so high that they can, they can at least grow quite well in the nursery without any fertilization. But we tested an increasing uh, different treatments representing different uh, amounts of uh, nitrogen fertilization. We planted the seedlings in, in Eastern Valencia. This is a Rincón de Ademuz, okay? And uh, we planted them, our treatments, our five treatments, in four terraces. Okay, do you understand me? Terrazas? Okay, four terraces. This is an old, this is an abandoned old cropland. But the terraces were different. Uh, the first terrace, where the picture is taken from, is the worst, is the, is the terrace with a Poor soil, the soil was is very shallow, so we expected very harsh conditions in that terrace, and the harshness of the conditions decreased to the terrace four. Okay. Well, uh, in order to uh, demonstrate that there were different conditions among the terraces, we analyzed the water potential of the seedlings uh, in midsummer. And yes, we confirmed that the terrace one was the worst site because the plants were more water stressed than in the terrace three and four that were the less harsh sites. Okay, so we have a gradient of stress conditions from low stress or moderate stress to very strong conditions. And we analyzed survival after seven years. And these are the results. Okay, here we represent the different nitrogen fertilization, fertilization treatments. Zero is no fertilization and 150 or 200 represents the amount of nitrogen, milligrams of nitrogen per plant. And as you can see, under relative 
moderate to low stress conditions, the difference between treatments is small, this difference are not statistically significant, but under very harsh conditions, those treatments that received more nitrogen fertilization, that were, sorry, I'm going down backwards, it's not, it's not good, these plants are larger, as you can see, okay, larger than these ones. So these plants had higher survival after seven years than the low or non-fertilized plants. Okay? So this is a lot of uh, results that are pushing into one direction. Is that not all plants have the same outplanting performance capacity in the field. Okay? Well, if you look at the growth, uh, we can find very difficult, uh, sorry, sorry very different uh, growth, uh, dif um, difference between treatments, as you can see, it doesn't matter the stressful conditions, but you can always see that high fertilized plants grow more than low fertilized plants. No? The difference are especially in terms of growth higher in the less harsh conditions than in the most stressful conditions, but even in these high stressful conditions, high fertilized plants, the large seedlings with a lot of uh, with nutrient rich uh, tissues have higher uh, growth than low fertilized or non-fertilized plants. Okay, in this case what we observe is that the survival probability of this shrub was directly related to the seedling size. So those seedlings that were larger, because in this case they received a higher fertilization, would have a higher survival probability than seedlings with the more small. So, well, our results, what are indicating, and this is one of the main messages I like to explain to nurserymen, to foresters, and you students like, such as you, uh, is that uh, what we have evidenced is that what we call productive phenotypes, I'm not sure if this is the most best name, but I don't know another way to call it, is they usually perform better than the seromorphic phenotypes. Okay? So, ah, sorry. Um, our initial hypothesis that the plants, these plants would perform better under very stressful conditions is not true. Okay? It doesn't work. So many people ask us, but why these plants work better under Mediterranean conditions? Because these plants are unbalanced, they have a lot of transpiring surface, and uh, so I think they are more vulnerable than uh, these kind of plants. Right? Okay, in order to really be sure that there is a strong or relative strong trend in the fact that large seedlings perform better than smaller seedlings, we uh, carried out uh, a small meta-analysis uh, with studies published in, in, in Spanish context. And we wanted to analyze if uh, how important is the size of the plant, shoot size, uh, that, uh, in order to predict the uh, survival of, 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 of our seedlings. And what we did is uh, separate studies uh, by sites, we, we divided studies that were performed in sites, in dry sites, in sites that rainfall was lower than 400 millimeters per year, and sites with uh, the opposite, with more than 400 millimeters per year. So what we did is uh, classify the studies in those that there was no relationship between survival and shoot size. That, seemed, that means that shoot doesn't, or the size of the plant doesn't determine survival. We also divided the studies in those that related survival with shoot size, where there was a positive relation between survival and shoot size, and those studies that found a negative relationship. So the survival was lower in studies, or was lower in when the plants had larger shoots. No? And most of the studies that we analyzed, we found no relationship between shoot size and survival. So that means that if there are survival difference in the field, uh, around 40% of the studies only morphology explain difference in survival. The rest of the studies, other factors that we did not control in this study, explain the survival difference. But what happens with the rest of the study? With the rest of the study, whether there was a, a significant relation between shoot size and survival? 
Okay, we found that uh, there were more studies showing a positive relationship between survival and shoe size than the opposite. And the difference was statistically significant. That means that in general, large seedlings tend to perform better than small seedlings within a species. Okay, within a species. And of course, take into account the same age of the plant. Or so if, if you want, I know that uh, a three-year-old plant is larger than a one-year-old plant, but uh, you cannot compare those two plants. You have to compare large or small seedlings of the same age. Okay. And a very interesting result is that we did not find any trend related with the environment, with the rainfall of the plantation site. So the fact that uh, the trend would change depending on we are in less messy or more sterile sites was irrelevant. It didn't, the wish, we did not see any effect. Evidence, our empirical evidence, are showing that the productive phenotype usually performs better even than the xenomorphic per, uh, phenotypes, even under a very high or very strong stressful conditions. Okay? We usually, uh, our time framework for deciding that is around three years. Three years. Three to five years, but three years is okay. I have published studies with only two years of results. But if you want to publish with one year of results, probably most uh, journals would not allow you. And especially in, in Mediterranean environments, for any harsh environment that growth is very slowly, you have to wait more. More than three years. Yes, yeah, yeah. three to five years is good time. Okay? But that's again okay, publishing a lot of papers, you know? That's, that's, do you understand me? Yeah. You had to wait three or five years to publish your first paper. <laughs> yeah. Do you understand me? Oh, however, probably the, the, the first bottleneck for sibling survival, sibling establishment, is the first summer. This is for sure the first uh, collapse of the survival curve. Afterwards, of course, you can you can get further mortality of the seedlings if drop periods uh, in the second or the third year. But the, the biggest peak of, of sibling mortality is recorded in, during the, the first summer or the first yeah. drought period after planting. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yes, uh, for survival, the first summer is critical. Mm -hmm. But for growth, you have to wait more. Mm -hmm. Because growth under Mediterranean conditions is very uh, slow. slow. So in the first summer, or first after the first growing season, you probably will not detect differences. So you start to detect difference probably in the third, second to third year. Okay, in growth, in growth. growth. Because survival will decrease, but uh, it will not so decrease so much as in the first yeah. season. It's not more gradual. Okay, in order to understand why ceiling size and nitrogen concentration of tissues uh, drive the outplanting survival, one of the first issues that we have to remember, at least for Mediterranean climates, is that Okay, when we talk about Mediterranean climate, we say it's a dry climate. That's okay, dry, yes, it's dry, but it's not dry all year round. You can have Mediterranean climates that the, rain, the annual rainfall is quite high, for example, around 1,000 millimeters, that is very high. It's, you can have the same rainfall in Barcelona than in Paris, but the vegetation is completely different. What is the difference? The difference is the summer. The summer. So we only got to have drought stress during three, four months. The rest of the year, the climate is wet. It rains quite a lot. Okay, depends on the side. I know if you were working in, in, in Alicante or in Almeria, we, uh, it's, but even in February it's wet, or even in November it's wet. When it's not going to be wet, it's going to be in August. But in the, there's. A lot of months where the rainfall is, is quite high. Okay, and that is a very important issue. So, two, three physiological processes is the root growth, the capacity to remobilize nutrients, and the capacity to, to be hydrated or to maintain a high water potential during the dry season. So, what I'm going to show you as far as I can is some results that support this, this conceptual model. 
Okay, when we developed the model, we started to uh, um, develop experiments in order to test uh, the main hypothesis that can be derived from the conceptual model. One of the issues that we want, we want one of the things that we wanted to check is that if uh, difference in the size of the seedlings, in this case produced by difference in nitrogen fertilization, uh, have difference in the growth of the root system. In this case, it's the root depth. This is an experiment with a juniper, juniper sturifera. And what we saw is that the plants that were received a high fertilization treatment had a deeper root system than the small seedlings. Okay, so it seems that the large or the productive phenotype uh, produces deeper root systems than the ceramorphic phenotype. This is a study with Pinus alapensis, and it's the same. We, we, so we analyzed the root growth rate and the number of new roots produced in three kinds of plants the increase of increasing size from small, intermediate, and large seedlings. And as you can see, the large and intermediate seedlings, the root system grow faster than the small seedlings, and the amount of new roots that they produced were higher than the small seedlings. So, the, one of the reasons that the results suggest is that large seedlings have a better chance to survive because they produce more and deeper root systems than the small seedlings. And that gives an important advantage under dry conditions. Okay, when we analyze what happened in summer, uh, we expected that if you have large and deeper root systems, you will maintain your plants more hydrated during the summer because your root system is uh, getting deeper to, to water uh, soil horizons. So if your water potential is higher, you can maintain higher photosynthesis. Okay? Well, this is a result. Uh, in one day in July, we analyzed the photosynthesis throughout the day. And what we observed is that the high fertilized seedlings showed high photosynthesis rate. Okay, then the small seedlings, then the low fertilized seedlings. And when we examine the water potential of the seedlings, large high fertilized seedlings had a higher water potential, maintained a better hydrated uh, condition than the low fertilized seedlings. Okay. Well, uh, and just to finish, okay, uh, what about remobilization? Well, we examined, we, uh, sorry, we analyzed um, uh, if the large plants uh, have a higher mobilization capacity than small seedlings. Do you remember my experiment of Pinus alapensis? This is a large seedlings against small seedlings. And what we analyzed is in the nitrogen content of the new organs. Okay, this is the, the nitrogen content of the new organs can come from the soil or can come from uh, remobilization. Part of the nitrogen in a new root comes from the soil, but another part can come from uh, your own research. So we analyze the contribution of both parts. And as you can see, when uh, there's no wheat competition, most of the soil, most of the, soil uh, of the nitrogen in the plants, in the new organs comes from the soil, and less can, amount of nitrogen comes from uh, the store. But as you can see, the amount of Nitrogen coming from store is much more higher than in larger plants than in, in small seedlings. The large plants also have a higher capacity to uptake nitrogen from the soil than the small seedlings, which also makes it more competitive. No? What happens when you go into a very competitive environment where weeds also compete for nutrients and, and water, as I told you? And as you can see, the amount of remobilized nitrogen in these large seedlings is very high, it's higher than in these plants. And in this case, where nutrients in the soil were low because of the wheat competition, uh, the, what had, the amount of uh, nutrients in store were critical for the higher growth. So these seedlings show higher growth because they were able to remobilize more reserves nitrogen in store than the, the small seedlings. So this supports the idea that large seedlings are able to remobilize to use more reserves for the, the new growth. Okay. Okay. So just to finish, wheat, uh, because the wheat thing, it's interesting. Because I would wonder what happens over the year. Because I mean, obviously, yes, they compete for the nitrogen, 
But in the long run, long run, if the weeds stay where they are and they die and they cover the soil, you will have less water stress throughout the year because the weeds will cover the soil and you will have less evapotranspiration evapor and uh, so on and so on. What do you think? Okay. Um, during the summer, yeah. when you have weeds in those sites, the, the humidity in the soil, at least in the in the shallow, in the most upper uh, soil sample, yeah. is quite lower than in sites that there are no weeds. Uh -huh. Even if you have um, organic matter or mulch or something like that, because because those the, the reason is because those plants extract a lot, huge amounts of water from the soil, uh -huh. so they dry completely the first layers of the soil. Uh -huh. um, maybe if you cut the the grass yeah. and you leave there there during the spring. And if the plants do not grow again, you can preserve the humidity after a rainfall. Uh -huh. But if you do not do that, uh, uh, the, those sites where you have a high amount of herbs are completely desert. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. But I mean, if you cut them, and it's, sure, if, if you leave them, they will compete and might outcompete the tree at the beginning for sure. Later, maybe not because the tree has access to lower layers. But if you cut them, I would say, or I, would, I don't know if uh, that's why I ask, uh, the amount of Additional root mass you have from those herbs, plus the stuff that is just, you know, covering the ground the mulch. up, the mulch. Okay. I think could have, it could be very beneficial. Yes, but probably it will only be beneficial while this, the the weeds do not regrowth again. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. If they don't so if they do not regrowth, yes. I, in fact, in many places, in in, in forest plantation, in crop, in, in abandoned croplands, many people do that. They cut the or remove the herbs and dip in them yeah. in order to, to increase the organic matter yeah. or this mm -hmm. emulsion effect. But okay. if you do not do it, no, you are complete this. Yeah, 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 sure, <laughs> sure, sure. I think it depends from the soil to the soil, yeah, of course. Me too. And okay. we, have, we, have done, we have done many experiments in South and Italy in the University of Basilicata. Uh -huh. And we have found that cover crops can, main, can maintain a higher amount of soil moisture in the first yeah. 20 centimeters. Even in summer? Yes. Even in summer. But if you maintain the grass? Yes. Okay. And also they can help the, the whole uh, air humidity in high levels. Uh, okay, when well, we measure... But, but you have to irrigate, of course. You have to, sorry? To irrigate. We have irrigated systems. If we irrigate... Ah, 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 and when you have uh, herbs, the, the soil dries out but, uh, a lot. In summer, I could yeah, well, in summer and at the end of the spring. The critical period is at the end of spring, when the grass is as this and it dries out. At that moment, the soil is completely dry and it will maintain dry during until the, the rainfall. But it's is dry in with independent that you yeah. use that the soil is in wild soil or it was yeah. in Mediterranean condition in summers you have a soil moisture around two, three percent. Yes. So it's independent of the earth yes. or not earth uh, presence. It's natural in yes. Mediterranean yes. Yes, 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 I know. Yeah. Yeah. But when we started to work in forest plantation in abandoned problems, yeah. the people say that it's better to leave the weeds because in summer, that dry wheat will shade the, the seedlings and yeah. help them to survive the, the summer drought. And no, yeah. that maybe they do it, but they, before they have dried out, they have dried so much the soil that the plants experience a very very strong yeah. water protection. Okay, so conclusions. Yes, so what attributes are important for? Making successful forest plantation in mature areas. Yes, of course, ceilings must be stress tolerant. Yes, that's true. But especially, what is important is to be cold stress tolerant. Cold tolerant, right? And uh, if you want to increase the stress tolerance of a plant, it's very important to slow the growth or stop it. To slow, to slow or stop the growth of the ceilings. So that is one of the main aims of. A nursery man, when he has to sell his plants in the fall to take, him, to take the plants to the forest plantation, is to stop the growth of the plants. It's impossible to be stress tolerant to any factor if the ceilings are growing. It's impossible. Okay, there is a trade-off. If you grow, you cannot be stress tolerant. 
you can stop it by slowing irrigation, okay, you reducing your irrigation. That is very difficult for most nurserymen because you have to be very ex an expertise and be a good nurseryman. And most of them, I'm sorry, but they are not very good. <laughs> and for us, the best way to stop growth is cold temperatures. In reduction of temperatures, when the temperature is reduced, the plants slow and the growth is stopped. And that is the best way to harden our seedlings. I know that we can do it here, but the problem is the nurseries that are in mild winter sites. In those conditions, they have to use other tools like reducing fertilization in the fall and reducing irrigation. That's why most of the forest nurseries now in Spain are all inside, because it's more uh, easy to control some important growth parameters inside the Iberian Peninsula and in the coastal parts. No? Okay. One of the important things is that large seedlings and seedlings that have received a high fertilization, that means uh, they have a high nutrient tissue concentration, or those are relevant attributes for uh, survival and growing fast in the Mediterranean environment. No? And the reason is because these kind of plants are able to remobilize and use a lot of resources for new growth. Remember, the key is to produce new roots, a lot of new roots, and to produce a lot of new roots, you need a lot of resources. You need to be able to remobilize, to mobilize a lot of resources to support that new growth. Okay? And that you can do it if you're large, you're big, and you have a high amount of nutrients in store. And for new growth to occur, you need time. That's why planting quite early or early in the growing in the wet growing season is critical because you need time. You can't plant one month before the summer drought onset. That you, the plants don't have time, so they will only have produced this roots, and maybe the soil dries out 40 centimeters in depth. That kills the plant. So you need time. You need a high quality plant together with time. Okay, so this is for me the most important issues from the plant point of view uh, in order to have a, a good success uh, in Mediterranean plantations. Okay? okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.